Is there any anatomical evidence for gazing? The entire human body is built for one thing, procreation. Every system promotes reproduction. There is no sexual organ built for homosexuality. So even our own bodies are evidence that we are heterosexual. Every bit of our body is proof that we are geared towards a homo heterosexual path. And nature abhors waste. Nature does not entertain inefficiency. So if it builds your body in a certain way, that's a message that nature is giving you. Animals, they fight for survival and the survival of their species. The principal aim of any government is to survive and you need a citizenry to survive. Homosexuality does not help us to survive. It does not help us to it does not help the state to survive so why would we support homosexuality when it does not help us to survive as a species why would you promote homosexuality right why would the state promote it or even protect it when it does not support the state to survive because the state needs people as Felix was saying gays cannot reproduce why should you use our resources for for gay practices and all those other things? And what I'm actually saying is that I'm actually saying that there is marriage between a man and a woman. And then there's a civil union that can be between gay gay couples. Marriage should have tax benefits and all the other benefits that it can have because it promotes the survival of species. It promotes the survival of the state. You can allow those guys to have their own thing, but it can never be marriage. Because an intricate part of marriage is that idea, that importance of sex, procreation, that importance, survival of the species and of the state. So again, there's clearly a distinction between homo heterosexual union and homosexual union. One is a marriage, that should have the support of the state, the other is not. I'm not saying that you should put it down. You know, you can have it as a civil union, but you cannot equate it to a marriage. It will never be equated to a marriage. And the state had, has no business supporting something that does not support it to exist. That's a secular argument for <clears throat> the differentiation between, you know, marriage proper and those other unions evidence in the animal kingdom there is no evidence of homosexuality in the animal kingdom uh, when they are like the, you saw a lion having sex with another lion back in the day these cases they only happen right when males are practicing like their skills and they don't have a female to practice on on at the moment and you know females are a bit tough mostly yeah even in the animal kingdom so they'll do it on their male counterparts they can actually do it when females are unavailable so they actually you know focus on them on the men because they have those passions and they don't know what to do with those passions so they focus on the men these are outliers these are outliers of homosexual practices no species has successive gem generations of homosexuals None. There are no successful generations of homosexuals. It does not exist as a, as a thing among animals. Incidences, and I said, as a practice, when females are not uh, available, right? So, any anyway, implications of it being a choice, because it, it's not natural, as you have seen. It's a choice. The legal implications. Regulating choices is possible. Regulating nature is difficult. Not the words difficult, not impossible. Social implications, sympathy from the society dwindles. The only reason that why people say that it's natural is so that they can have sympathy from society. Or oh, those guys can't help it, where are you, you know, whatever. It's not natural, it's a choice, as the evidence shows. Psychological implications. One of the reasons that most people don't want to say that it's a choice 
It's because they have to think now within themselves. The battle begins within themselves. Why have I made this choice? Why did I not make that choice? And that's why homosexuals, transgenders, all those other groups, they are, they are a bit unhappy at all times. Because they can't understand why they made this choice and they did not make that other choice. So anyway, national implications, right? Because if it's not natural, then why are these guys forcing it on us? We'll have to think about it. Who are these groups coming to us trying to force something that is an African, as you have seen, and unnatural, as we have seen? Who are these groups? And what is their agenda? Those are questions that we'll ask ourselves as a nation. As soon as we have this, we understand that it's not natural. So anyway, there's another argument. Even if it is natural, not everything that is natural is good. Men naturally have sex with women. Women naturally have sex with men. If a woman is there, she's offering you sex, should you go with your nature? Remember, sex, procreation, bonding, sacrifice. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You have to conquer your flesh. And it is important, because sacrifice is the name of the game. In sacrifice, there is love. In sacrifice, there is freedom. Because a principle is at play. Your soul is free when you sacrifice for another. Your soul is free when you're not a slave to your flesh. Your soul is free when you have overcome your nature and you have learned a way of expressing your spiritual principle. So for the Christians, there is an increasing over-reliance on the laws of men, which is very bad. There is no fear of God in our society, which means there is no wisdom. Intelligence is the avoidance of wisdom. The problem with Christian society today is that we're trying to use the government to <clears throat> promote Christian principles instead of trying to elevate the intellect of the man to understand what homosexuality is, to understand what is natural, to understand what is a choice. We are not elevating the intellect of our fellow man. Instead, we're relying on the government. You know, ban these homosexuals. There is an effective communication of Christian principles and teachings. And that, that endangers the souls of the believers and the non-believers. Because the non-believers, they'll continue with their practices and say, you Christians, you know, you, when you elevate their intellect, when you engage with them intellectually, when you study their arguments, then where can they run to? Because you have examined their falsehood, you have rebutted their falsehoods, so now what will they hide under? But we choose the easier path to the laws of men instead of relying on the supreme authority of God. And for the soul of non-believers, when this case, the Bill Gates, the, the United States, the George Soros, whatever, they hit them with these ideologies, these false ideologies, the believers, it washes away some of their belief, some of their faith. And unless we elevate the debate, unless we delve into those arguments, then that faith will remain eroded. So anyway, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. Christians, we are failing. We have become symbols of hypocrisy. And that's part of the reason why guys don't believe us. And that's part of the reason why guys don't follow us. And we are depending on human mechanisms instead of the elevating people, elevating their spirit, elevating their souls. So in it, I'll just leave with this quote. Freedom does not exist in doing what we like, but in having the right to do what we ought to do, St. John Paul II. Please let me know what you think about these videos. Leave your comments in the comment section below the video. Thank you to all my 1,100 subscribers. Please subscribe to my channel and share these videos. 
Do not hide a light where there is darkness. Pray for me that I may not flee for fear of the wolves.